Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for another webinar from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. My name is Aaron Cohen. I'm a neurosurgeon from Goodman Campbell, Brain and Spine, and Indiana University Department of Neurosurgery. Uh, uh, tonight's session will be a special one. It will be a discussion regarding how we can rehabilitate our patients who have suffered from subarachnoid hemorrhage more effectively and, uh, in other words, accelerate their recovery. We're really happy to have with us um, Susan, uh, Sharon, and Teresa, um, all of whom have had significant experience working with subarachnoid hemorrhage patients, and personally, I have really enjoyed working with them along the years. I think their experience is going to be so crucial in terms of rehabilitating our patients to the next level and returning them to their functional status. So Erin Palmer, as always, uh, our uh, research nurse, will be with us as well. And I'll let Erin and the ladies take it away. Thank you. All right, good evening. Um, we're basically, like Dr. Cohen said, just going to talk a little bit about rehabilitation after a subarachnoid. Um, I just want to kind of go over um, kind of an overview of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, Four out of seven patients are left with disabilities following a subarachnoid. Um, these disabilities can range anywhere from minor um, to uh, severe disabilities. Um, a lot of the disabilities that we look at um, that patients um, report um, can be weakness on one side, uh, back pain, um, fatigue, low endurance, um, visual disturbances, short-term memory problems, and trouble concentrating. Um, one of the other common issues um, that patients normally will complain of is uh, depression as well. Um, so it's really important to take with you that um, rehabilitation is very important in the recovery process. Um, you have to look at what may, is the best fit for the patient. And also, a lot of times with um, choosing a specific rehabilitation um, placement, uh, we are looking at um, normally the significant other or family members are normally the ones that are pretty instrumental in helping with that decision. Um, so, you know, ask a lot of questions. Um, Research the facilities that the um, hospitals are giving you. Go tour them. Um, review their websites. See what their specialties are and what kind of re um, therapy services that they have available. Because um, the big thing and basically our goals are is that we want to achieve the optimal outcome for the patient and to help them cope with the current situation that's going on. Um, so the big thing is knowledge is power. So ask as many questions because the more information that you know, um, you'll be able to uh, weigh the pros and the cons and be able to make the best um, decision for yourself or your, for your family member. Um, the big thing uh, we wanted to touch on before we went into the rehab process was the depression. Um, the reason is being that um, a lot of times depression can indirectly um, play a role on your rehabilitation um, just due to the fact that it um, can affect, um, it's affecting your body, your thoughts, your diet, your eating habits. Um, sleeping habits. So these are all things that are going to be, um, be affecting how your progress is during your rehabilitation. Um, depression um, is caused by it's a traumatic uh, caused by a traumatic event um, due to the fact that um, the subarachnoid it's a life threatening event. Um, there can be also causes be due to changes in your lifestyle um, or role changes, meaning that. Um, you are not able to maybe do some of the functions that you were doing home prior, so a significant other or other family members are having to take over for that. Um, treatments are, would be make sure you have a good support system. Um, help lean on your family and your friends. Um, look for support systems in your area um, and access all of these that are available to you. Um, talk to your primary care physician about medications that you can be put on to help treat the depression. Um, you can also go see a counselor to do some talk therapy. Um, and then your doctor may also recommend um, you talking with a neuropsychiatrist. And basically what they do is they can do different kinds of neurotesting um, 
to look at the specific um, areas in your brain to see maybe where more of the problem areas are so that we can get more individualized care for you. Um, the important thing with this is um, when you're getting treated for your 